Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Lieutenant General Michael E. Carrillo, the Commanding General of the 18th Airborne Corps, welcome to the 82nd Airborne Division Change of Command and Change of Responsibility. At this time, we would like to extend a sincere welcome to our distinguished visitors. General Garrett, Commander, Forcecom. Lieutenant General Howell, Commander, Joint Special Operations Command. Lieutenant General Baudet, Commander, United States Army Special Operations Command. And Lieutenant General Flynn, Assistant Chief of Staff, G357, HQBA. And all other friends of the division who are taking the time to join us virtually. On behalf of all the 18,000 paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division, Thank you for joining us today as we honor and recognize our outgoing and incoming division command team and families. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise for the playing of our national anthem, followed by the invocation delivered by Chaplain Brian Coyne. <laughs> you to join me in prayer. Almighty God, this morning I stand in awe that we are able to celebrate a peaceful and orderly transfer of authority of the most able and powerful division in the world. It is a blessing that most of the globe will never know and only comes because you have allowed us to live in this great republic. Today we are profoundly grateful for the leadership and character displayed by General Mingus and Sergeant Major Burgoyne. Let their positive impact reverberate across this organization for years to come. Continue to show them your favor as their scope of influence expands and provide them, Amy, Kate, and their families profound blessings as they depart. And for General Donahue and Sergeant Major Pitt, give them an abundance of wisdom, strength, and endurance as they take the division to new heights. Grant them, Devin, their families, and your favor as they serve as your vehicle to provide for this division. May you continue to bless the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne, especially those who find themselves in harm's way this morning. And we pray in your powerful and matchless name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, the command of the 82nd Airborne Division will pass from Major General James J. Mingus to Major General Christopher T. Donahue, and the responsibility of the division will pass from Command Sergeant Major Cliff Burgoyne to Command Sergeant Major David Pitt. The colors posted before you today represent the six brigade size units of the division from left. First Brigade Combat Team, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 82nd Airborne Division Combat Aviation Brigade, 82nd Airborne Division Artillery, 82nd Airborne Division Sustainment Brigade, and the division also has a Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion. General James M. Gavin once famously said, show me a man who will jump out of an airplane, and I will show you a man who will fight for his country. Paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division are three-time volunteers. They volunteer to serve their country, they volunteer to become airborne qualified, and they volunteer to serve in an airborne unit. In a given year, a paratrooper trains nearly 270 days, runs 700 miles, conducts 12 night tactical parachute operations, and participates in numerous day and night live fire exercises at the individual, squad, platoon, and higher levels. The 82nd Airborne Division is still the All-American Division. Our paratroopers represent all 50 states in our nation. 
Within the ranks of our paratroopers, 54 different languages are spoken. Our paratroopers are rangers, jumpmasters, and sappers. More than two-thirds of the paratroopers in our ranks have combat experience and have received hundreds of awards for valor to include the Distinguished Service Cross and the Silver Star. Throughout its history, the 82nd Airborne Division has always been at the leading edge of our nation's defense. From the division's first combat in France in 1918 to its victorious stand in the desert stands of Southwest Asia, the All-American Division has distinguished itself as an elite and ready fighting force. In recent years, our paratroopers have been asked to broaden the scope of their capabilities to include peacekeeping, peace enforcement, and disaster relief missions. The change of command is a traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The focus of the ceremony is the transfer of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority and represent his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, the colors are also. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major, the senior enlisted member of the division and the principal advisor to the commander. The transfer of the colors symbolizes the transfer of command and authority from the old commander to the new and demonstrates to the paratroopers of the division that the old commander has passed the mantle of leadership to the new commander. With this also passes the loyalty of the paratroopers to their new commander. This year, the colors are posted in symbolism of the transfer from one commander to another. By authority of paragraph 3-5, Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the 82nd Airborne Division, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, effective the 10th of July, 2020. Signed, Christopher T. Donahue, Major General, Commanding. Custodian of the Colors is the Division Command Sergeant Major, who symbolizes the non-commissioned officers of the unit, the very core of the division. As the senior non-commissioned officer, he is the natural spokesperson for the loyalties and feelings of the soldiers and serves as the principal advisor to the commander. The transfer of the Colors symbolizes the transfer of this responsibility, demonstrating to the paratroopers that Command Sergeant Major Cliff Burgoyne has passed the mental leadership to Command Sergeant Major David Pitt. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General, 18th Airborne Corps, Lieutenant General Michael E. Carrillo. All right, what a great day today. General Garrett, Lorelei, General Flynn, General Howell, General Baudet, thank, thank you so much for coming down for this. Uh, it really means a lot to the paratroopers out here today. So everybody, what, what a glorious day out here. You know, whether you're in a small group here at Fort Bragg, small group, don't turn the cameras, um, or they're a much larger group of us here virtually from around the country. Thank you for supporting us in this great division. Today is a milestone event for the All-American Division, formed for entry into World War I. It is important today to recall words of General Omar Bradley. Bradley reconstituted the 82nd Division and the AA Patch in 1942, which had been deactivated after the close of World War I, now reactivated for a new war in Europe. Bradley indoctrinated the entire division in the culture, heritage, and legacy of the old division that defeated the Germans at St. Mihail and Meuse Argonne in World War I. He also brought in a group of 82nd veterans from World War I, such as Alvin York, to talk about their experiences and what the AA symbol meant for them. Bradley told us all Americans, quote, it is critically important that you know that within a legendary unit like this one, valor endures from one generation to the next. Valor endures, end quote. There is great wisdom in those words. 78 years later, and in its 103rd year, valor endures across the 82nd Airborne Division. Today, the All-American Colors change hands between commanders for the 51st time, and we change responsibility for All-American 9 as Command Sergeant Major for the 34th time. It is so fitting that we host this milestone moment in the life of America's Guard of Honor in front of the 82nd Airborne Division Museum. This place is a sanctuary. Behind us sits the All-American Hall of Fame, where the legendary figures who formed the culture of the All-Americans are honored in perpetuity. To our left sit the stones memorializing 5,124 All-American paratroopers killed in combat and the 367 paratroopers killed while preparing for combat. Their valor must endure. 
Over the past two years, Jim Mingus and Cliff Burgoyne have built on the foundations of that valor, adding their own innovations, planks, and ideas. Their leadership was on full display seven months ago. While the country was celebrating a new year, more than 3,000 paratroopers assembled, drew equipment, loaded aircraft, and took off for the Middle East in the darkness of the night in response to Iranian threats on American interests. It was the first major no-notice blowout of the immediate response force in more than 30 years. The 82nd Airborne Division exceeded the timeline standards of the immediate response force, pushing out the initial elements in fewer than 17 hours, and then sending follow-on forces in rapid succession. A total of 157 C-17 equivalents would fly into and depart Pope Army Airfield with paratroopers, soldiers, and equipment. Jim Mingus knows that all elements of the immediate response force came together on time in harmony when needed to do the culture developed here over the decades. Jim and Cliff's fingerprints are all over this division, revolving the major combat training exercises, the storm series, to reorganizing for large-scale combat operations, to functional fitness, nutrition, to modernization, developing agile leaders, managing talent. This organization does everything with a singular focus, with a unified purpose. That purpose is readiness and rapid response. As Jim likes to say, this is why we exist. These two leaders have led one of the most challenging, complex, and frankly surprising periods of change, ambiguity, and instability we've seen since 9-11. In the face of a geopolitical crisis in the Middle East, national pandemic, and unrest in our nation's capital, they've led with the, clear, the kind of clear-eyed, compassionate leadership our paratroopers needed. Beyond Cliff and Jim, we're losing a full package of four here. Kate and Amy were a tight team and always focused on the paratroopers and their families. Through some tense moments, Kate and Amy checked on families, focused on getting out as much information out as possible in every way they served as a supplement to the command team. The Mingus family is heading off to the National Capital Region, while Jim will assume a not yet announced position of strategic importance to our nation. We know what it is, we just can't tell you. We know great things are in store for Zoe, Luke, and Nathan in the months, years, and decades ahead. And we're honored to have Jim's parents, Maurice and Brooke, and his two sisters, Debbie and Mickey, all watching from Springfield, Missouri. Jim's brother, Sean, is watching from the great state of Minnesota. Amy's parents, Herb and Judy, are watching from Lumberton, North Carolina. On the Burgoyne side, in addition to Kate, we've got son Trey and daughter Chandler. Now, Cliff Burgoyne is what people around here refer to as a brag baby. He started his Army career here and spent much of his career jumping out of airplanes. Chandler, however, in addition to being a volleyball star, is literally a brag baby. She was born in Womack Hospital 19 years ago. So Sergeant Major Burgoyne is heading out to be the three corps command sergeant major to serve as the Phantom Nine in just a few weeks, and we know that three corps is getting one hell of a leader. And right behind these two come another great command team to take the mantle and add their own bricks to the culture of readiness. CD and Devin Donahue are well known to Fort Bragg and to the airborne community. There's little we can say about his crew in an open air ceremony. One of our nation's finest warriors, CD spent most of his time on the dark side commanding shadowy forces we don't publicly recognize and doing things we generally don't talk about outside of classified vaults. His reputation is that of a leader who develops leaders. He'll certainly do that here. CD comes to us from the NATO Special Operations Component Command in Afghanistan, where he had a critical role at a critical time for a critical mission. CD and his team developed a new network of Special Operations Forces that will serve as the backbone of a smaller U.S. footprint in Afghanistan. In addition to his many deployments and significant time in combat, he's the father yes, five, and count them, two sets of twins. Elena, Amir, Haley, Zachary, and Jojo, welcome back to Bragg. We're excited to have you all on the team. The only disappointment is that Elena and Amir are now old enough to babysit. Because Cindy and Devin paid for my daughter's first year of college when she would babysit two sets of twins at six years old and 18 months of age. During CD's 13 month deployment to Afghanistan, Devin kept the lights on, kept the kids doing homework, and raised all five of these kids. Can you imagine entertaining, teaching, and caring for five children with dad deployed during COVID? Maybe Devin should be the one commanding the 82nd Airborne Division. <laughs> CD is partnered with Command Sergeant Major Dave Pitt, our new All-American Nine. While Cliff Burgoyne was born here, Sergeant Major Pitt grew up here. More specifically, he spent the overwhelming majority of his 27 years in our Panther Brigade holding every enlisted position through first sergeant. Sergeant Major Pitt grew up under the tutelage of some of the greats, McFowler, Lambert, Capel, England. These names alone still make him break out in a cold sweat. 
Storm Raiders time in the 82nd did, though, get off to a little bit of a rough start. In 1993, he fell asleep at the Panther Brigade newcoming brief during Panther 6 addressing the group. <laughs> Panther 6 calmly woke up Private Pitt and asked him what he wanted to do in the Army. Pitt said he wanted to one day be the Panther Recon Platoon Sergeant. Well, Sergeant Major, you've flown past that goal. <laughs> Interestingly, the Panther 6 that woke him up that morning is none other than Dan McNeil, former All-American 6 and Dragon 6, who was honored here among our Hall of Fame plaques in the building right behind us. But if those plaques behind us and these stones here could speak, they would tell us that leaders come and go, but that valor endures. Even in a global pandemic, with threats looming outside our borders, even amidst troubles within our borders, valor endures. You see, for 103 years, this institution has been the light, has been to the world what the light tower is to the lonely sailor at night, a visible symbol of hope in a sea of uncertainty, a signal that light always wins out, a calling to go forward in an ocean of darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Commanding General of the 82nd Airborne Division, Major General James J. Mangus. Also, a uh, great big morning, sir. Thanks. Great words and uh, great wisdom for all of us. To all our distinguished guests that are here, thank you very much. Family, friends, and paratroopers, and the many out there watching us online, thank you for joining us today. A special shout out to the crew that are watching live, our Gold Star families, specifically Pam, Kylie, and Dane. Thanks for tuning in. My folks and sisters in Missouri, brothers in Minnesota, Skull, sir. Um, he's also a Vikings fan, yeah. My, Nathan, uh, my son Nathan in California, the Iowa Mingai clan, the Hedgepath crew here in North Carolina, dear friends in Indiana, New York, Florida, and Georgia, Martin, Tom, Alan, and Steve, and the many others to include Flo Groberg. Um, usually we have to nearly every paratrooper in the division on magnificent display of military tradition, pomp, and circumstances. But we've had to adapt, and now that the bum old folks like us are complaining, the paratroopers, the 18,000 paratroopers, are very, very happy because the only thing they'd be waiting for right now is the term pass in review. And I'm already sweating, I've only been up here 30 seconds. 38 years ago when I joined the Ar Army, all I ever wanted to do was command a company in the 82nd. So as a young company commander in 2505, I thought I had the best job in the world. I was wrong. This is the best job in the world. It has been an honor of a lifetime and an amazing experience to walk amongst heroes and lead this organization for two years. General Garrett asked me yesterday what I was most proud of. My answer was climate, culture, and identity of the 82nd Airborne Division. A climate of team, a culture of excellence and readiness, and an identity of America's Guard of Honor. Linked is the notion of mission command and trust. As we all have said our goodbyes over the last many weeks, it has been crystallized in my mind that the trust in mission command is bottom up. Leading and trusting is easy when you're surrounded by amazing folks. General Garrett, General Carrilla, thank you for allowing the climate and culture to thrive underneath. To Kate and Cliff, you guys have been amazing and dear friends. Couldn't have asked for a better Ranger buddy. Wishing you all the best. And yes, we are now officially formers. To Pete, Mark, Dave, Ollie, Nathan, you were all consummate deputies, humble, yet always making up for my shortcomings, ensuring the division was taken care of and ready. To Whit and Kelly Wright, now in Austin, Texas, never seen a better chief of staff, period. You were our big toe and Uncle Hulka, for sure. To my personal staff, no one sees the real side of you more than your personal staff. So Brian, John, Stroud, Coley, Ace, Big O, thanks for taking such great care of Amy and I. To the division staff, you've been asked to do more than the impossible on multiple occasions over the last two years. And not only have you risen to the challenge, but like Dan Kearney used to always press us, we're going to win no matter what. And winning does matter, and we did win, Dan. Uh, we won. Although we don't have troops on the field, they are represented by the brigade command teams that are sitting over here in our adjacent tent. Six brigades, 29 battalions, 146 companies, 18,000 total. If you can visualize that on Pike Field. You have been tremendous. Every day you ensure this division is truly ready. Our troopers and families are taken care of. You demand excellence and are constantly building a future army through your personal example. You epitomize and model character, confidence, and commitment. To the 18,000 troopers, I could talk for days, but I'll sum it up as this. The sun never sets on the 82nd. 
In the past year, you've ex executed operations in support of every combatant command, South Korea, Japan, Colombia, Southwest border, Washington, D.C., Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Most of that was no notice, and most of it was nearly simultaneous. But most importantly, when the nation called, when the world needed you, you were ready. Our Army G3 General Flynn described us in two words the other day, reliable and dependable. Many say that, say they can, but only a few can actually deliver as advertised. Anywhere in the world in 18 hours is a tall order, but you make it look easy. You live the Elgot motto every day, little groups of pissed off paratroopers happily going about their day. We work here on Fort Bragg, but we live in the surrounding area. We are part of a greater Fayetteville family. Bill Bauer, Gary Reisbeck, Brian Knight are over here. They represent all that is good and the love we get from our family outside the gate. Many don't know the Herculean efforts and outpouring of support they provided in the past several months as we quarantined nearly 10,000 troopers either post or pre-deployment. Beer, lots of beer, pizza, chow, comfort items. We had plenty and folks went out of their way to make sure our troopers were taken care of. And that's just a small example of the love and support our community gives every day. Next month, in August, the division will celebrate its 103rd birthday. Part of what makes our culture so strong is our love and embrace of our history. The deeds, actions, and heroes that went before us is what inspires us. Our future is set based on the linkage of past and present. We must maintain that connection that bridges old and new. Not here today, poor Maurice got all the way to the gate in Paris, but Maurice Renaud, who was three years old on D-Day, and the son of the mayor of St. Mary Glees at the time, has ensured those connections between the All-Americans and the people of St. Mary's as strong today as it was 76 years ago. Also here, Colonel Keith Nightingale, who we inducted into the Hall of Fame yesterday, a living legend and walking historian, personally learned from the likes of Gavin, Vanderbilt, and Ridgeway, and he has the gift of bringing history alive. Finally, a special thanks to my family. It's hard to put into words, but Amy, Zoe, Luke, and Nathan, I cannot thank you enough for your love and support, which allowed me to stay focused and ready to lead. In closing, the division is in great hands. CD, Sergeant Major Pitt are both combat proven leaders, personal friends, and no doubt they will make years 103 through 105 as remarkable as the flat past. Thank you all again for coming and for joining us online. God bless Army Strong, Airborne, All American Six Out. time, the outgoing commander, Major General Mingus, will present flowers and gifts to his family members. His spouse, Mrs. Amy Mingus's roses, are in full bloom, symbolizing the beauty and fulfillment of her time with us here at the 82nd Airborne Division. She will be receiving a bouquet of red roses. His daughter, Zoe, will be receiving a single red rose, and his son, Luke, will be receiving a coin. In COVID, like, this isn't 12, it's only 11. <laughs> Zoe gets the 12. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General, 82nd Airborne Division, Major General Christopher T. Donahue. senior leaders, thank you for this incredible honor. Uh, to all the association members, community members, uh, Maurice out there in France, the recent Hall of Fame inductees, thank you all for coming here today. But in probably most importantly, the Golden Star families, we look forward to getting to meet all of you. It is absolutely the honor of my professional career to serve in and command this historic division. Above all else, it is an incredible honor to be part of a unit that is willing with no notice to go anywhere in the world jump into any unknown problem, meet our enemies or solve any problem, whatever the nation requires of us. An incredible honor. Valor endures. There are many people to thank, I promise I won't say all of them, but to my wife, Devin, my kids, my dad out there, uh, all my sisters, relatives, friends, classmates, probably most importantly, subordinates, NCOs, former bosses, thank you. 
A special thanks to General Mingus, Amy, and the rest of the 82nd uh, Airborne team for an incredible and gracious transition. And, expect, and of course, you'd expect nothing else like that from the Minguses. They're an incredible, incredible team. Uh, speaking of incredible team, General Mingus and CSM uh, Burgoyne have built an incredible team and culture. They have proven they can go anywhere in the world. They have honored the legacy of the this, members of this division for World War I, World War II, Vietnam, contingency operations in Grenada and Panama, obviously Iraq and Afghanistan. But most importantly, they have ensured that the standards are a crucial part of the present, past, and future of this division, and we can never thank them enough. CSM Pitt and I look forward to building on their accomplishments. To the paratroopers of this division, we look forward to building on that legacy I just mentioned and ensure that we can alert, deploy, and go anywhere in the world, accomplish any mission, and win whatever the nation needs. This means we must continue to develop the most lethal squads, sections, crews, doesn't matter what you are, that you are unbeatable, that you can outshoot, outmaneuver, outmaintain, and physically dominate any foe. At the division level, we must continue to innovate and build on what General Mingus and CSM Burgoyne have done to ensure that we develop the most lethal and capable division headquarters that can defeat and defer that can defeat and deter any foe in large-scale operations or contingency operation. And of course, we must do all of this while taking care of our great paratroopers and their families. Again, it is absolutely the honor of my uh, professional career to stand up here today as your commander and uh, to be prepared to go anywhere the nation requires. Army strong, all the way, airborne. Thank you. time, the commander, Major General Donahue, will present flowers and gifts to his family. His spouse, Mrs. Devin Donahue, is receiving a bouquet of yellow roses. Yellow is the traditional color of welcome and the new beginnings. These flowers represent the anticipation of the wonderful things yet to come. His daughters, Alana and Haley, will be receiving a single yellow rose, and his sons, Amir, Zachary, and Joe, will be receiving a coin. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing division command sergeant major, command sergeant major Cliff Burgoyne. <laughs> Sir, uh, you talked about uh, the photo uh, taken in 1942. I had it in my house uh, while I lived here, and I looked at it every day, and it's amazing. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, th this ceremony here uh, was put together in, in the eyes of uh, Sergeant Major Kirk. So Sergeant Major Kirk is our G3 Sergeant Major. So everything that's happened here is because of him and his efforts. And I'm gonna tell you, everything that's happened while I've been here is because of Sergeant Major Kirk. And so he deserves the round of applause. Sergeant Major Kirk right there. Thank you very much. Uh, for all out there online, uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll make this brief. But uh, all the guests mentioned, thank you for coming. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, this is bittersweet uh, for myself and my family. We consider this home, and, and I'm personally struggling uh, to leave. Uh, there are numerous paratroopers that deserve recognition for me, but unfortunately, General Corella took all my time. So <laughs> no one wants to hear me talk anyway, and so I'll keep this uh, short. I'd like to publicly recognize a few. Uh, one, our Gold Star families mentioned earlier, but our Gold Star families, our hearts go out to you. Major General Mingus, <clears throat> I cannot put in words what you've done for me personally, professionally, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to serve under you. You're unmatched in every category. There's not a person here that is a peer to you. The only thing that I'll tell you um, that you need to improve on is your golf club, sir. <laughs> He's got some old wooden sticks, uh, and they're older than Jimmy Carter. And so Jimmy Carter, uh, he's known for the 55 mile an hour speed limit. And so he turned 55, and I think his golf club is older than him. Amy, you've got to let him get any better. All right. Amy, uh, your love and genuine care for our family, thank you. I appreciate it. 
Your friendship has made the journey all more special. You're a wonderful person, and you made us better. The Burgoynes will always be Team Lemus. Thank you. Sorry, Major Kirk, I mentioned earlier, but uh, words can't describe what you've done for this division. What you're going to do, he's going to go be the NCO Commandant in Korea. And for all of you folks out there, when you hear the name Sergeant Major Kirk, he's a very talented human being, so recognize him. To the third, third floor team, General Mingus mentioned you. Uh, we, we can't say how much we appreciate working with you as a team, so thank you. Your problem solving, Captain Anderson, or excuse me, Major Anderson now, it is amazing. Thank you. To Sergeant Riley and Sergeant Bublitz, I'll be forever in your debt. To the Brigade Command teams over here, you make us all look better. Appreciate your desire to make our paratroopers successful. To the officers, NCOs, and most importantly, the paratroopers of this division, you are the best of what our country has to offer. My only wish is that our citizens in this country, they knew exactly what you do on a daily basis and your sacrifices to protect our freedoms. There is none better than you, the paratrooper. We are proud to stand amongst you. John Arson, Bill Bauer, Gary Riesbeck, thank you for what you do. Brian Knight, thank you. He called you the All-American Taliban. Yep, I got it. True statement. She had the beard, Brian. <laughs> to the overall Fayetteville, Pinehurst, and Southern Pines community, thank you for support to this division and our paratroopers. I'd also like to recognize uh, Chuck Elliott, Mike Germont, and Spike Smith of the Patriot Foundation who give so much of their time and their generosity to our paratroopers. And finally to my family, Kate, you're amazing and I love you. You are the leader of the family and you keep me on the straight and narrow. Just drive 11 hours tonight. <laughs> to my kids, Trey and Chandler, you've grown up here, you've matured here, and you turned into adults here. It's been a pleasure. Your mom and I have watched you grow into adults. And now it's on to another adventure and I know you're ready. Well, maybe. In closing, uh, Jill Donahue and Star Major Pitt, you're, you're taking on an awesome experience, a wonderful responsibility to the kids here that live on the 11th hole, steal all the golf balls from the next door neighbor's yard as they hit them to them, so make sure you get out there, okay? <laughs> but you're, you're taking on an awesome opportunity in front of you. Uh, you have no idea. You're writing your speech right now as you sit there in two years, and it's going to go so fast. I'm a paratrooper for life, America's Contingency Corps, America's Guard of Honor, all the way, airborne, stay all American. this time, the outgoing Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Burgoyne, will present flowers and gifts to his family. His spouse, Mrs. Kate Burgoyne's roses, are in full bloom, symbolizing beauty and fulfillment of her time here with us at the 82nd Airborne Division. She will be receiving a bouquet of red roses, and his son, Trey, and his daughter, Chandler, will be receiving a gift. Ladies and gentlemen, the Command Sergeant Major, 82nd Airborne Division, Command Sergeant Major David Pitt. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. General Grab, Lieutenant General Corolla, distinguished guest, Lieutenant General Plain, welcome. Thank you for taking your time to be here today. General Donahue, thank you for picking me to be your Sergeant Major. I look forward to serving with you. Command Sergeant Major Burgoyne, thank you for the smooth transition, and I wish you and your family safe travels to the great place. I will keep my remarks brief, but I'll be negligent if I did not mention a few people. To General Retired Austin, thank you for that conversation all those years ago to pri then Private Pitt on the live fire range. You're an exact result of today. I will endeavor to strike that tone with every paratrooper I come in contact with. To General Kernan, retired, thank you for seeing me as more than a driver. Sir, you failed to mention that part. 
right? I guess I, to his driver, wherever you're at, you could beat me. There we go. <laughs> to General Costanza, sir, he's not here today, but thank you for picking me to be a director of training at Sergeant Ranger. The experience was invaluable, and I promise never to bring up the TTK. General Clint's laughing. To Sergeant Ranger McFowler, I will forever be known as one of the McFowler boys. To Sergeant Ranger England, retired. Thank you for knowing what I needed to do even when a cocky sergeant thought he knew better. Command Sergeant Major Retired Thorpe, he once told his sergeant the secret of success. I will endeavor to surround myself with such people. Command Sergeant Major Retired Capel, thank you for being a great mentor and all the barracks painting lessons that I endured. Command Sergeant Major Lambert, I promise to ensure that the 82nd choir remains 100%, even if it means sending a new spur sergeant to try out because he thought his company was too busy to send us over. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is true stuff. I can't make it up. I'm telling you. <laughs> to all those that I've mentioned and the ones I could not get to, it is not lost on me whose shoulders I stand on. To my children and family, I know that you wish you could be here today. To the honorable little sister, Hattie Pitt, Justice of the State of New York Supreme Court, our sibling rivalry continues. <laughs> <laughs> and to quote you at your swearing in, who's winning now? <laughs> I await your response. <laughs> and finally, to the paratroopers at East 2nd Airborne Division. It is absolutely my privilege and honor to serve alongside with you. And I look forward to sharing that North Carolina blue sky on the canopy. Army strong, airborne, all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the All-American Soldier and the Army Song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for attending. Airborne all the way.